Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a 1v1 replay, this time on the beautiful map Westwold between Gondor and Isengard. We have the blue Isengard player Amonra facing against the orange Gondor player Pro Range. He is starting with a blacksmith and a farm inside the base, Isengard is building only a Uruk pit because on this map, you know, on the map Westwold, which is a very friendly map for evil factions like Isengard and Mordo, you have a bunch of settlements. And you don't need to build anytime soon furnaces inside your base. Just make sure to capture all these settlements first. Because the amount of money you can get from the mills is just much much better. And also keep in mind that every mill after the first one up to four, up to four of them is giving you the wood bonus. Which is giving you a huge discount on your buildings inside your base. That's going to make for example furnaces which normally cost 350 cost up to 280 only. That's a huge discount you know. 70. That's like crazy amount. Warchan has been used to take down the farm right after it's building up, but he has no more Warchan now on this Urukai anymore. On the bright side, he will be able to destroy this farm though. That's pretty nice because Gondor was just investing 200 resources for that. He's also now using one of the soldiers to grab those settlements. And of course, the money is kicking in for both the factions, Gondor and Isengard at the same time. But Isengard is one of the best counters to Gondor because you will have the chance to get many, many pikemen which is going to be a nightmare for the Gondor player to deal with. And he will eventually have to recruit some, you know, soldiers from the barracks to be able to compete with your Uruk pikemen. And again, Isengard will grow rich in this map. And for that reason, the second you see soldiers, you can just simply build your work pit and get some work riders yourself, you know, as a counter unit to them. And of course, RTS games mean you see the enemy stuff, you need to build something which is good against the units from the enemy team, right? And once again, pikes are weak against swords, and swords are weak against uh, war riders. So the second you see something happening, you just need to adapt your gameplay. That's why it's so hard to say this is the right way to play this matchup, because it can depend on every single different map and in every single situation. But look at this situation, guys, for the Blue Isengard player now. We see one, two, three, four mills outside. He will have even five mills very, very soon. Potentially even six. And his base, which is looking empty for now, but trust me on that one, it's gonna be filled with stuff from in like a minute. It's going to be a full base. And Gondor in the meantime is building the stable, which is of course needed. You need those mob mobile units from the Gondor faction to be able to fight for the map control and also to be able to creep the work layer, the goblin layer, and so on. But it's a great matchup. It's one of my favorite matchups, Gondor clashing Isengard. On any map, it's just great because that's like El Clasico matchup, you know? That's so OG, guys. I like that. Isengard having a very strong early game against Gondor because Gondor's weakness is the lack of units early on. You have only two soldiers. Unlike Rohan, you can't get any peasants from the farms. Unlike Isengard and also Mordor, you are not starting with a Uruk pit or Orc pit because that's not gonna work out. Uh, that's a meta build. You always have to build a blacksmith. Uh, the reason is simple because blacksmith needs some time to hit level 2 and uh, which is also needed for you to be able to buy the upgrades from the blacksmith. It needs to be passively hitting level 2. And the later you build that, the later you will be able to buy upgrades. Gondor Knight's already on the field now. The second one is getting, of course, recruited. And they need to now be used desperately to reclaim some of the settlements ASAP. Otherwise, Isengard will be out of control. And look at that. Two furnaces now. But again, it's a matter of time. The money is going to kick in very, very soon. He's even creeping at the very same time, which is also very important in this matchup for Isengard. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because you need to try to deny the Elven Ally summon from the Spellbook of Gondor as long as you potentially can. You won't be able to deny that all game long because there are just too many creeps. But you need to try to delay it at least, you know? Look at that base. Once again, it's filling up in no time. Urukai, spam now. Just spam pikes all the time from the Uruk pit and send them to everywhere. Everywhere on the map. Creep with them, take down some farms, defend your mills. You can... This is the magical weapon against Gondor. Early, mid, in even late game. Okay? Base is full. Warp pit is coming up already, which is nice because then you have also some mobile units for yourself. As for heroes, Isengard has the least heroes in BFME 1. Keep that in mind. You have only Lourdes and Saruman, but they are the best. Like, Lourdes is the most cost-efficient hero by far. He just gives you everything what you're asking for. He gives you Cripple, which is an anti-hero ability. He gives you leadership. He gives you pillage, which means money, money, money every time you kill enemy units or buildings. He gives you, like, leadership. That's just crazy. The chance that you can use Carnage to blow up any enemy hero from the Gondor besides Gandalf. Even Gandalf can be taken down from Carnage, you know? 
Okay, just take a look into the minimap in the meantime, please, guys. It's looking blue to me, and that's impressive because, once again, you know, it's hard for Gondor now to compete with the Spike Man. He has to build the barracks ASAP, but look the Gondor piece in compared to the Isengard piece. He has Warcraters coming, more Uruk Pike Man being recruited, which he can always use for creeping. He has collected uh, two power points already. He doesn't even need to go for the industry, he can just go for the uh, Tainted Land. To be able to cover the third Elvin Wood. You know, I would still go for the, for the industry because it's just too good to miss. You know what I'm saying? The chance that you get 100% boost of your resources is just so nice. And of course, it's also leading you later on into the Field of Fires, which is going to be awesome on a map like Westfold. Which means double the money from the Lamry Mills. And look at the resource right now. And it's going to be doubled. Can you imagine that? <laughs> this guy is gonna be rich or rich, you know what I'm saying? Alright, Warcry is now on the field. He can also go for the for the Palantir, which is giving you the movement speed boost. Which pretty much means that you will be able to catch the enemy Gondor Knights. And that's gonna be also his plan. He's going to use Hole, which means 60% damage. Gondor Knights are being now outrun, of course. They are trying to micro, micro round. The worst thing that can happen to the Guns of Action player in this match is to lose Gondor Knights. At any stage of the game, that's going to hurt you big time because Gondor Knights are extremely expensive. They cost you 600 each when you have many, many farms. But 800 when you have no farms. And also upgrades on them is going to be um, very, very expensive, of course. More pikemen. Just press shift and left click on the pikemen, guys. And get pikemen. Trust me, that's the magical weapon in this matchup. Lourdes is also being recruited at the same time. The troll creep can be creeped by Lourdes, which is going to get him to level 3. Unlocks his carnage. We have still many, many creeps left on this map. As you can see, he has now Blades, but no armor yet. And Blades is weaker than Warchant. So when, for example, Warks are Warchanted, he can easily fight your upgraded, uh, with Forge Blades upgraded Gondor Knights in no time. But the creep is going to be secured by Gonzo. Level 5, don't lose him! Oh, he's pressing S, the banner, the banner, the banner. Oh my goodness, not even close, baby. You should be able to get away now because Palantir is on cooldown. Very important, game-changing move there, uh, by the way, from the Gonzo player. Losing this, I would just call GG at this point, trust me. But this map is looking really bad for Gonzo, man. Look at this minimap, do you see that, guys? Everything is blue. Like, he has one, two farms, and now only one farm left, two farms still. This is also going to be taken down. Isengard can creep this war player, which is one of the few creeps left on this map. Hobbit is being invisible around this area, and there is a way of getting him visible again. Just use Vision of Palantir. Look, um, I mean, it doesn't even say that uh, it's, you know, reveals the invisible units, but it does. So if you use Palantir, you will be able to see the Hobbit, or if you use the cripple which you can always auto use with the right click so if you right click on the cripple and he's nearby to hold on a second oh my goodness this guy is always able to see if he's gone the knights like that he missed the cripple also on oh lord is potentially gonna die the troll is a mean one in bfm1 so killing him is gonna be kind of look how much he's losing to kill him troll is just one shotting the spike man in no time but still a great map control we have only two Gondor Knights now. The third one is also there. Never mind, he has three Gondor Knights. With Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. He will also, of course, need these shields to be able to get them a bit more tanky against arrows from Lourdes, from Towers, from Archers. Pike Man... Uh, oh, that's gonna feed him now big time. Look, he has almost the power points for the Elven allies, and that's gonna be unlocked now. Now, Gondor has a couple of options. Either he can go for a Base Rush with the Elven Ally summon, try to deal as much damage to the base as possible, which is something I wouldn't recommend, because even if you can deal a lot of damage to the base, um, look at the minimap, you know, he has so much money that he can easily recover, unless you can kill the Uruk Pit, which means you have some time to be able to fight for the map control, since Uruk Pit once again has to be level 2, for you to get the chance to recruit some pikemen. Okay, even Saruman is on the fields now, who is a great defender, of course, and with the fireball, you can deal a lot of damage and one shot those Gondor Knights in no time. And in this matchup, it's very important for Isengard at this stage of the game to go for the siege. Just go for the siege and draw his attention to his own castle. That's very important because otherwise he will just, you know, dance around and kill, get more power points. Because keep in mind that Gondor power points are devastating in mid to late game. The Eagle Summon is just so strong 
you can kill Saruman and Lourdes in literally a couple of seconds. And Army of the Dead, you know, you already know, it's like a game-winning ability from the Spellbook of Gondor and Rohan. So in order to not reach this point, you need to make sure to finish him off ASCP. And you can just build Siege Warwicks, get Pikes with upgrades, and go for the Siege. All you gotta do is get a ram, two rams maybe, to make it even a bit faster, and just get pikemen around this area. You don't even need anything else but pikemen. He has nothing that can fight them. Nothing. And you have, in, in, just in case he has something to fight them, you have also your Lourdes and Saruman, you know? Which is, uh, you know, how can you deal with that? The answer is you can't. But don't waste time. Just don't waste time. You have so much money, you can buy all the upgrades at the same time, like he does. Everything is purchased. There we go. Alvin allies for the first time. He's going to use them on the Alvin Wood, which makes him a bit tanky. And smart move, just use them for the map control fights. You need to do something about the map control. You have now the Gondor Knights number 4. He has so many Gondor Knights now on the field, that's nice. Okay. In the meantime, Isengard will eventually end up losing many, many of these mills in long terms. Two power points collected. Saruman has to make a move. And the thing is that... It, you know, this map, Westworld, throws a lot of attention, you know, there is so much you need to watch at the very same time, you need to watch your castle, you need to watch the settlement, you need to watch your pikemen, you need to watch the elven allies, like, you have to pay attention every single second if you want to be able to maintain your control of this game, and if you don't, you will lose every single settlement in no time, elves, they are chasing, they are on the hands, uh, pikes are running for their lives, pikes are fast enough to disengage, by the way, they are the fastest, Infantry units in the game, just like with the Urukai. Uh, they are much, much, much faster than uh, soldiers and, of course, peasants and orcs. However, elves are matching them in terms of speed. Elves are the best and the strongest, uh, and the fastest, I mean, um, good faction units. They are the best because they are able to get uh, weapons from, you know, the sword and the, and the bow. And for that reason, for example, if you get trampled down... You can always use the sword mod and they are immune to trample. Like, they, the enemy units are gonna ride through them and that's gonna cause them to take damage. So Lourdes is almost level 2, has cripple. But killing enemy Gondor Knights at this point with Lourdes is kinda tough because they have all the upgrades they need. And once again, especially the Night Shield is going to make them extremely tanky against arrows from Lourdes. So Isengard is just wasting time. Just go for the Siege ASAP, I'm telling you. That's what you gotta do. Just build double siege. Look his money. I believe he's... I mean, he doesn't have that much money for whatever reason. I'm just assuming he's getting even more upgrades on every single unit. But that's gonna be changed very soon. He has also Tainted Land. And he's one and a half power point away from getting the Field of Fires. But Gandalf might be there soonish. Look his money. He needs a quarter power point to turn Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. Which is, of course, needed because Gandalf the Grey is definitely not worth investing 6,000 resources. Disengage with level 9 Gondor Knights. Highly leveled Gondor Knights can fight the enemy pikemen one-on-one. -on -one. As long as you don't trample into them, you need to stop before the fight starts and just fight them in melee range, you know? Okay, just go for the Siege Forks. 5,000 for Gondor. Isengard, just buy the outpost. You can buy every outpost and just build additional furnaces. I mean, just make sure that you are growing rich. That money is never gonna be a problem for you. That you should never watch at the bottom left side of your screen how much money do I actually have. Alright. He's also getting some more pikemen, of course. He's just giving now Gondor too much time at this point. Uh, Alright. Gondor player is getting almost the money he needs. He has almost the power points he needs as well. He needs to kill like a mill or some lumber mill workers. That's all he gotta do. Without heavy armor, it's hard to fight against highly leveled Gondor Knights. But this one is only level 2. Does he have also purchased the banner? The answer is nope. That's something we see all the time. You can manually level them up to level 2. And Gandalf the Grey is recruited. And the second he joins the battlefield, he will be using the Gandalf the White spell. Why is he not using that before? The Gondor Knight is going down, by the way. It's simple. Because if you use it before, the Wizard Plus is going to be on cooldown. But if you use it after he comes, you will have the Wizard Plus available immediately, you know? Doesn't really matter in a situation like that, but it's still helpful. Just if you have the power point and you recruit him for the first time, wait until he comes and then use the power point up from the scale book after that, you know? You see, now this now the Visa Plus is available immediately. If you would use the Visa Gun of the Vites before, it would be on cooldown. Just go for the siege now. Just go for the siege. Like he's actually upgrading every single unit, I'm assuming. That's why he has no money. Gandalf? 
has to be careful there is lords keep that in mind but the easter light is able to kill lords also in no time alvin allies will be used uh, without heavy armor they die quite fast so pikes are just disengaged don't feed don't give him the chance to get the eagle ally summon unlocked that's the worst thing what you can do because right now as we are talking there is no firepower on the isengard army that means the eagles can be game winning solo oh don't feed gandalf too <laughs> i mean a lot of stuff has to be watched over again it's easier said than done you know because we are focusing on one side but the players they need to be focused on every single side of the of the of the map which is a huge map westwald it's nothing like force of Eisen, which has like only like six settlements or eight settlements you know what i'm saying all right just by this outpost too yes now one two three out of four outposts under this control lord saruman war Priders, and double siege is finally incoming into the ballistas so basically ballista is taking you a long time and i would just go for the rams oh, oh, oh micro nice nice micro here from isengard don't feed gandalf the last thing what you want is a fat gandalf one shotting your heroes trust me on that one and gondo might go for some trebuchet soonish because he knows the siege oh nice move here from the gonzo player he is trying to buy some time and that's why you gotta wait until the weapons are on the field you know just don't give him the time to stall the game out because he might go for the base rush soonish elven ally is going to be on cooldown very soon that's good for isengard of course gandalf is was able to kill some units but nothing too crazy more gondor knights are being recruited as we, as we are talking he has only two gondor knights or three gondor knights as we see right now one of them is level 10 which is the highest rank in battle for middle of one we are getting some more ballistas he has towers now Gondo's money is not looking the best. And he has seven power points collected. Go for the I see it. Just get the boost, you know? The field of fires. Get the field of fires and grow richer than anybody else. The siege, slowly but surely. You can always try to sneak in an explosive mine to one shot the vault. Every vault from Gondo and Rohan is gonna get one shotted from the explosive mine unless. The Gondo player was able to get the Numenorian Stormwork upgrade from the Stormworker. That's the only way a wall can survive. Otherwise, the mine is enough to blow it up, you know? And not only one piece, two pieces at the same time. Gondor is trying to sneak in some Gondor Knights to kill these Ballistas. He knows he needs to stall, he needs to buy some time. And he will be able to kill once again, I believe. Pikes are not moving. Fireball on this unit. There, use it, Fireball. Fireball, nice fireball. Don't feed the Gondor Knights though. He's microing around. He has to do that. One part of the wall has been broken. But does Gondor have money to rebuy that, rebuild that? Almost. That's why it's always the best when you can destroy two parts of the wall instead, you know? Isengard also has to pay attention, of course. Gandalf is level 6, six already. There is one farm and one farm here. That's it. Two farms only for Gondor pretty much all game long. Two parts of the wall broken. Alright. He was actually running it down with the Warcladys. Visa Plus is on cooldown. He's gonna try to destroy even more parts of the wall. Uh, I believe he's not ready. Just build a Uruk pit. The thing is, that's what I don't understand, you know. When you have this much money, you don't need to play with one Uruk pit or one, one work pit at the same time. You can build multiple Uruk pits. Just spam units all the time. Because once again, guys, keep in mind that evil factions are able to get power points from losing units and heroes unlike the good factions. So there is a strategy, by the way, which is called Feet to Win. Like, I've seen many, many Gondor against Rohan replays in which Isengard was just spamming pikes, losing them eventually, of course, against Gandalf, against horses. But because of the huge eco advantage, he was able to keep making units. And as evil, you have way more units on the field than a good faction will ever have. And he was just busy killing those pikes. And again, you kill stuff in return, you lose, stu you lose stuff, but you get power points from that. So long story short, every time he was able to get Balrog summon. And even after using the AOD, because AOD, when there is no follow-up, can't win you the game. But Balrog can win you the game alone, because he's enough to one-shot the entire castle of Gondor and Rohan by himself. Ballistas are getting taken down, but it's okay. One, two, three, four parts of the wall has been already broken. He's going to commit now, but he needs to be careful, because Gondor is only two power points away from getting the Eagle Summon unlocked. There is a farm and there is a farm. Just kill the farms in the meantime. Make sure that Gondo is not getting any money anymore. The commitment is going for the freezing rain, which is a huge mistake, by the way. Gandalf got crippled down, which means he's gonna be forced to stay on place for like 30 seconds. The lightning sword will be missed. And the full commitment on the base. 
Does he have the power points for Eagle yet? Oh no, this might be actually GG, boys. Many, many trebuchets, though. He was trying, he was missing the uh, Warm Tongue ability from Saruman on the Alvin. By the way, you can also use Warm Tongue on those catapults, which, which, which is pretty funny because then you can actually make them shoot against each other, you know what I'm saying? But it looks like... Oh, Gandalf is killing Saruman. You have no power here, Saruman the White. Level 7, Lurt is going down and Gondor player will be able to defend himself. But, and Lurt is still alive, but it's gonna be taken, he's gonna be taken down. The Eagles are just hitting like an absolute truck, ladies and gentlemen. And with the Eagles, just clean up the map and fish some more power points. Don't be idle, don't be AFK with the Eagles. Make something happen. You need to try to get to the Army of the Dead Summon ASAP. Freezing Rain was definitely questionable. Why? Because the only leadership you are able to negate is from Ganzo, which is not worth negating at all. Just get fuel the fires. Now you might say, yeah, Shanks, but he's already having a lot of money. Again, doesn't matter. More money is not gonna hurt you, am I right? Alright, so Eagles are doing a phenomenal job, as we are used to. More units are being recruited, but of course, Isengard is to now invest a lot of money, and that's what I'm trying to say all the time, into reviving his heroes, Saruman and Lourdes. He's 11 and a half, in a bit more than that, away from his Balrog, summoned from the Spellbook of Isengard. Once again, Balrog is able to one-shot the entire castle, which means if the Gondor player doesn't have an outpost, he will be simply defeated, regardless of how much money, how strong, and how many units he has on the field. That's how Battle for Middle Earth games work. You are kind of, you know, it's like the one ring, you know, you are like bound with the, with the, with the castle or outpost or camp, anything that is a citadel, pretty much. Okay, Gondo is seven power points away from getting the uh, army of the dead unlocked, which of course is enough to one shot heroes, a bit, you know, units like pikemen, they have no chance. He was using the Elven Wood, but Elven Wood got covered by the Tainted Land. We have the new now pikes are, you know, being again used for map control fights. Lourdes has to make a move now. Lourdes has to be on the hand. Just keep this Gandalf on focus. If you can kill Gandalf with Lourdes, it's a game-winning thing. Because then you don't need to be worried about a wizard who might blow you up, you know? The Strebishes were also annoying to deal with. The Gondor base is, you know, still looking really, really open. Like, the gate can be closed, but it wouldn't change. Like, one, two, three, four, five openings for Isengard to enter the base. Pikes are being chased down by Gandalf. Easter Knight can't be missed. It's it's a on-hit spell, which means it's like targeted ability. There is no chance you can miss it, you know? Uh, while, for example, Cripple from Lourdes can be missed. Okay, Saruman is on the fields now. Saruman the White, who's almost level 7. But again, Gandalf is just much, much stronger. Because the Easter Light almost all alone is enough, almost enough, to one-shot Saruman. All you gotta do is, you know, hit him with warning, warning Arrow from, uh, from Faramir, for example. Or with Elven Allies, a couple of shots into the Easter Light is enough to kill him. That's why you need some levels on Saruman to make him a bit more tanky. Just make a move. He has now Pikeman, Crossbowman, Combo which are the slowest combination of units you can actually have. I don't like them at all, and they are horrible actually against anything but horses. Uh, and disc trebuchets are gonna have a fantastic time against them because <laughs> the, the stones can't be dodged since they are extremely slow. That's why you gotta make some um, work riders potentially, or even some more ballistas. I think these trebuchets are gonna be a nightmare to deal with. And also, once again, Isengard has to make a move a bit sooner because the Eagles are reloading. And with the Eagles, he can just simply focus them on the Lords. And if Lords dies, guess what's gonna happen? Then Gandalf is going inside the jeans, killing the combos with the Vizaplas, killing Saruman with this Easter Light. And all of a sudden, you will see him getting eventually even level 10 in long terms. Gandalf is dancing around the Rosy. Map control is still looking great for Isengard, but it's a bit better than it was before for Gondor. Gondor actually has still a lot of money, surprisingly. He has like around 4,000, which means he might get some more Gondor Knights eventually even or get even some trebuchets from the storm, from the siege works. Gandalf is just looking for a chance to kill some more units to get more EXP and power points. Power points are crucial at this stage of the game for Gondor because he needs to make sure if he wants to be able to win this game, Army of the Dead is required. Without Army of the Dead, you can't. So ideally, you need to have like 4 or 5 Gondor Knights and you use Army of the Dead inside the castle and then the Gondor Knights right after for killing that. 
Like, the, the worst thing what you can do is use Army of the Dead for defense all alone without being able to put any counter damage, you know? That's why he's recruiting more and more Gondo Knights all the time. But again, Gondo is the best summons in the game by far. That means you have Eagle Allies, Elves, Rohirrim summon. So, eventually, you will have like a full army of summons in long terms, you know? Isengard is more known of the, of the strong eco. Like, you have Industry, you have Field of Fires, this kind of stuff. But you have only one summon with the evil factions, and that's the Balrog all alone. We have the new bomb. Almost six power points collected. Gandalf is nearly Our level eight, so he's going to siege from this side. Firebolt is able to one-shot the trebuchets. By the way, the siege has begun. He should not do that, in my opinion. He's what he's doing now is just wasting time. There is no, absolutely no reason of going from this side. You know, there is no need. There is already an opening which you was investing time and money into. Why would you do the same now and destroy the other other side of the castle? There is no reason for that. Really no reason at all. Because during all this time, he keeps feeding. Like, this devil, 10 Gondor Knights are extremely strong. He has now 4 Gondor Knights with Gandalf, who might go for your base. And you have nothing to defend yourself. If Eagles combine, this base might might actually fall, guys. Double Uruk Pit finally. Make also Uruk Pit here, maybe. Oh, he's going inside. The Eagle will be summoned defensively. The Warcriders are being crushed. They need to disengage. Don't feed. Don't feed him army of the dead. That's the last thing what you want to do. Gondor is retreating now. He might actually still keep going on the enemy base if he wants to. The Tita has been taken down. That's okay. There is one outpost, which means even if the castle falls, he won't be defeated. Eagles are running it down. How much power points Isengard needs? Isengard is also getting a lot of power points, of course, collected. We will have nearly the, oh, <coughs> the power points for Army of the Dead. Lurt is going to be surviving that. But in the meantime, the rush is happening. He has one, two pikemen, but Gandalf can crush them. Don't run into the pikemen with level 10. That's the last thing what you want to do. And the thing is, Eagle ally, uh, Elven allies is not bad, but I think he was just taking too much damage already, and the rush is not going to be successful. But he was able to kill the Uruk Pit level 3, which means no more pikemen anytime soon, because keep in mind that Uruk Pit has to be level 2, like mentioned many, many times. 16 power points collected, which means 4 power points after we will see the Durin spin, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Gonzo player will get the chance to summon his army of the dead a bit sooner than that. Like, he's only one and a half power point away, uh, which means Arivadachi, the Isengard army, and with that also Lords and Saruman, they will die. Like, you have no chance. Only Warcriders might be able to get away, but these slow units and slow heroes on foot, army of the dead will run them down. Look at the wall. Like, he's trying to make the Gondor base look like an Isengard base, maybe. I don't know what his plan is. It is a tower. Blacksmith and a well for the sustain. And he wasn't playing without anything but Gondor Knights and Gandalf all game long. And of course, his power points from the spellbook. Gandalf is on the hands. He's trying to fish power points now. That's why he's using Easter Light. He's trying to get to the point. He knows in long terms he won't be able to defend himself without the army of the dead. He knows eagles are on cooldown. I have no trebuchets. And I have not enough space. I have like, he has only three building spots. To build stuff onto, you know, actually five, because he has also in the front side. Just run around, and Isengard has to make sure to deny him the power point, demolish the buildings in time. If you don't, power points are rising. If you don't, he is getting one step closer and closer and closer and closer for the army of the dead. The fireball should be used on the trebuchet, by the way, on top of the wall, just to get rid of them. Look, the power point is rising as he's chunking, towering up. He's waiting desperately. Now the power points are unlocked and he will be unlocking that the second it's available and army of the dead. Fight for me. But look, the power points are rising. Watch what's going to happen if Saruman dies, guys. Watch. If Saruman goes down and he's going to go down, trust me on that one. Boom. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying all game long. You get power points from killing stuff. So just wait until the EOD is gone. Don't use it too early. Why? Because when the army of the dead is able to kill Baldrog, by the way. But in the meantime, this outpost is going, for, going to get crashed. Gondor is actually not a lot of money. I believe this base is going, fall, going to fall. Unless Gandalf is going to try to potentially fight him, maybe? Nope. Breathfire. Not the best. He was missing the stable, but it's okay. He has enough time to finish off the castle still. The, uh, the stable level 3 is going down. 
In the meantime, he's trying desperately to destroy the outpost. But again, Gondor was able to buy yet another one. So this is the only outpost. Okay, the base is falling apart. Alright. Oh, he will be able to save this outpost too. I mean, he has double outpost now. But the castle is gone. The good thing is, Gondor has almost the money to rebuy the castle. Oh my goodness, man. This is actually quite close. Because if Gondor rebuys the castle, the walls are going to be dead again, you know? Remember the castle, the, which was just recently getting destroyed, had almost no walls around it anymore. It was like open like Mordor or Isengard, you know what I'm saying? But this one is going to be a brains new, you know? Brains new from the store. Seven power points collected. He has the power points he needs for the Claw Break or for the Rohirrim allies, whatever he wants. He has to wait for Ganzaf. Isengard is trying to keep him away from this area, but he has to make, make a move now when Gandalf is coming. In the meantime, this is going to go down. Potentially, this one might also fall. He's dancing around to Rosie. Trying to deny him the power, uh, the, the castle. Because Gondor has the money. No, Gondor has not the money yet. Guys, and that's the thing, you know. That's what I'm talking about all game long. That's what's going to happen in long terms. You will have to deal with so many summons at the same time. Look, elves from this spot, eagles from this spot, Gondor has so many summons. Like, it's hard. Call. It's hard for you to deal with that. And he has also now many, many farms. I see one, two, three, four, five farms. That means the money he needs and the money he's missing for 5,000 to buy the castle is going to be there very, very soon. Gandalf, in the meantime, is also level 9. Oh my goodness. Boom, they were clamped, he killed so much. Oh my goodness, man. And that's why you go for the field of fires, ladies and gentlemen. Look, he's running out of money. He's running out of money, which is unbelievable, but the truth. That's why Freezing Rain is absolutely useless in this matchup. It's good against Rohan and Mordor. It's indeed needed against them, but against Gondor, you don't need that. What you need is more eco, and field of fires is going to give you that. Almost the money he needs, 5,000. He's waiting for that. He's waiting for that. And Eagles are just being used. One of the, the best non-ultimate summon in the battle for Middle Earth 1 by far. And the castle recaptured. Brains new from the store. And guys, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Likes are happening quite a lot. And what you can also do for me is, if you of course want to, Check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. Uh, the link is in the description down below. I would love to meet you in my, in my next live streams. And this Friday, by the way, this Friday, around 8 p.m. GMT plus 2, you will have the grand finals for the current PFME 2 tournament we have running in uh, the patch 1.09 version 2.0. It's the best of nine grand finals between the two current best players of PFME 2, which is going to be live broadcasted, of course, on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. And if you are not making it, unfortunately, to the live streams, that's no problem too. Even though I would love to meet you. you can, we have a second YouTube channel, which is called PFME World. And also this is in the description down below. Which is maintaining all these uh, videos and live streams from our Twitch live streams. That means you are even able to watch them later on on the YouTube channel, guys. Alright, fire. This is going to be taken down. AOD is available soon once again. And yeah, at this point, it's it's a suffer game. Unless you can, unless you make something happen when AOD and Eagle Summon is on cooldown, I think you will eventually lose your army over and over again, you know? And Gandalf is really close to hit level 10. Saruman knows he can't survive that. Cloudbreak is going to be unlocked from the spellbook. He might leave Saruman actually for Gandalf. That would be a nice choice. Just get Gandalf there and kill Saruman to get him level 10 faster. Very smart move here from the Gandalf player, by the way. And look at how much EXP he was able to get. Like a quarter away from getting the War of Power unlocked, which is always fun to watch. Balrog summon. But Gondor player has now so many farms outside, he will be always able to rebuy. And as long as you can't kill him fully, destroying the castle is still nice, but it's not gonna make you win the game. Breath Fire. Nice, Breath Fire. Four buildings. Five is the magical number, but it's okay. Four is more than enough to finish it off. Okay, the counter-attack though. 
It's kind of level 10 yet. Really close. Cloud Break will be used, which is a stun on the level 1 unit. As long as they have no level 2 or any hero that gives them, gives them fear resistant. Level 10 unlocked. Water Power is available. Is he going to use it? And the answer is yes. He's going to use it, ladies and gentlemen. Nosta Crash. Baldrock in the meantime was, of course, able to finish off. Oh, use Fire Whip. But it hurts. I believe he was not paying attention. I mean, he's trying to go inside the jeans, but the gate is closed. In the meantime, the Isengard base is falling apart. I cannot believe it. Isengard is only two outputs alive. What a turnaround, dude. What a turnaround. I mean, I gotta be honest, if I would be in the spot from Gonzo, I would have called GG many, many times. It was looking really bad for Gonzo. Let's be honest, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about this game? And I believe Gondo is going to be able to win this. Because Eagles are going to be available soon. Balrog is on cooldown. And yeah, Isengard has money, but it's not enough. He was just not playing as well as he was playing at the beginning of the game. He had the chance to win this game multiple times. But going for the Freezing Rain was a major mistake. And also not building oh multiple God. Uruk Pits. He had the chance to build the Uruk Pits here and here at this point. Just spam units all the time, keep up the pressure and play around the cooldowns. When you know Eagles are on cooldown, make a move. When you know AOD is on cooldown, make a move. Don't wait and give your opening the time to reload them again. And of course, in long terms, you will end up losing the map control against Gondor, especially in the super late game. This is the stage of the game we are in right now. With Cloudbreak, with Rohirrim summon, with Gondor summon, with Elf summon, with Eagle summon, with AOD, with Gandalf getting more and more EXP, eventually hitting level 10. And of course, this highly leveled Gondor Knights is even worse to deal with. And yeah, long story short, don't give Gondor too much time. That's the lesson we learned today, children. <laughs> five power points collected, but you see, he has no money. He was just investing 5,000 into rebuying this. He will be losing this outpost one by one. He has not enough defense, no pikemen anymore. Uruk Pit is only level one. No pikemen, nothing can match those condonites. Yeah, he was playing really great in the early mid game. At some point, as you could see, guys, he had like full map under his control. Gone had like one or two farms max outside for a really long time. But uh, the white tree, you know, the white tree, we will, we shall see the glory days of Gonda once again. The city has been taken down, and Gonda calls for eight, and Rohan will answer Master the Rohirrim. Death. <laughs> All right, in the meantime, oh, oh, the, what? Does he have heal? No. Oh, he got crippled down and the crossbow man. <laughs> the crossbow man. That's the first time he dies in, in this way? That feels bad, man. But it doesn't matter because he has so much money and reviving Gunner will cost you only 3,000. By the way, guys, funny fact, if you guys don't know, potentially you don't know, uh, that reviving Aragorn level 10 is more expensive than reviving Gandalf level 10. Reviving Gandalf level 10 is gonna cost you the, the half the money of the initial investment of 6,000. While reviving Aragorn is gonna cost you 100% the money of the initial investment, which is 3,500. Which is kinda funny, because Gandalf costs much more at the first place than Aragorn, right? Maybe it's because level 10 Aragorn is just MVP. Like, level 10 Aragorn, guys, is, trust me, in like many, many situations, not all of them, but in many situations, level 10 Aragorn is stronger than Gandalf. Trust me. Because the thing is, that AOD is uncounterable. Like, War of Power has like a flat damage, right? With that, I'm trying to say like, uh, for example, if the enemy units have enough leadership with, you know, like Saruman, Lourdes, uh, Warchan, and they are higher level, they won't die to the War of Power, you know? In 2v2s, in 3v3s, even no chance of killing them. And again, as Gandalf, you need to get really close for the in to the enemy team, to the enemy units, to be able to kill them. Or to be able to use the War of Power in the first place. Alright, Balrog summoned to kill the Gondor Knights, but they were able to get away. In the meantime, the Isengard base is gonna fall one more time. Uh, that's a desperate move. Isengard will have only one single camp protected, protecting him from getting defeated, while Gondor has still three outposts. So, even if the base falls and he missed the breath fire, that's why, that's a, by the way, that's a trick, guys. He was demolishing everything to build the statue. Why? The statue has, like, a less hit value, hit range. Like, it's small, 
of course killing the farm and again you need to just hit the edge here and because the statue is so small as a building hitting the building with the breath fire you need to st stay a bit or step a bit a bit closer you know what i'm saying just you know ho hopefully this makes sense for you guys that's why you will see when professional players are playing expert players are playing when they see balrogs i mean they demolish buildings and build statues instead just to have a bit more chance the Balrog is gonna be gone without finishing either the outpost nor the castle. And Isengard base is slowly but surely going down. And yeah, the Isengard player who was growing super rich doesn't have that much money anymore. Saruman can't even be recruited anymore, guys. That's the problem. That's the problem. He has only a outpost. He will be able to destroy this one, but it's not gonna make him win the game. You know, that's the problem. Gandalf is getting eventually recruited one more time. Yeah, he was smart to buy him actually from the outpost and not from the castle, knowing that Balrog might be summoned one more time. Hopefully we will see, the ch we will get the chance to see Gandalf War of Power one more time in this phenomenal 1v1 match between Isengard and Gonzo on the beautiful map Westfold. And Theoden can and should not complain anymore and not say where was Gondo when Westfold fell, because Gondo is right here, my dude. Gondo is right here defending the Westfold and protecting Rohan. So double castle against only two outposts. 1800 resources and Gondor will have no problems very soon money wise. Because what Gondor can do and what people are not actually doing as often as they should is build a marketplace. I'm telling you, build a marketplace and because marketplace is so nice. Just, you know, just do it. Marketplace. You get 40% value from the farms inside and outside of your base, which is kind of crazy. Like, you need to imagine that when the game lasts a while how much value you will get from the marketplace of course it's a very high initial investment which definitely pays off in long terms Gandalf level 10 what of power Gandalf is back on the menu boys Lourdes has to be the one once again cripple him down that's the only way you can stop him talking about Lourdes where is he I don't see Lourdes I see Gandalf only pikes double castle Start, the stable is coming up for five statues actually which is giving you a huge discount look at that Boromir normally cost you 1600 now it's gonna i mean now he's gonna cost you only 1120 so pretty pretty good on cheap heroes and even much 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 better on expensive heroes like aragorn witch king i mean witch king can't have value from that because evil factions have no hero discount they have no statue as you guys know but just in case for example you are playing mordor and your ally is Gondor or Rohan and your ally leaves and you build four statues and you have the chance to recruit your Saruman, your Witch King and Nazgul's way way cheaper. And that's the that's the power of the eagles. That's what I was trying to say, tell you all the time guys. Just use the eagles, kill the lords, no more problem. Now again, Gandalf can really step up and do the work. You know, just use War of Power, kill the entire army. That's what we're gonna see now potentially in this kind of situations. And Gandalf is coming boys. And Gandalf the White. Actually, these units are hitting like a truck. Look at this crossbow man, actually. That's crazy damage. Dude, look how they're bursting Gandalf. Oh my goodness, that was really close. Oh, kill him. <laughs> Level 7. Oh my goodness, they killed Balrog. They killed, oh, they killed Gandalf not once, but twice. The same unit. The MVP of this game. Nobody else was able to do that but them. Look at them, dude. They crush everything. But the outpost is going to going to be taken down definitely. There are some level 3 Lamer Mills, but the thing is that, yeah, the power points after that do, do not matter. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter anymore. So all he gotta do is destroy the second last or the last outpost at the bottom left side and he will be victorious. Because even if Balrog will be summoned and even if he can take down the enemy castle, he has not the money he needs to by the castle he's gonna use the balrog defensive that's the only thing he can do balrog of morgoth as the outpost is going down and isengard ladies and gentlemen will be defeated and gondo shall rise once again i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did guys please don't forget to leave a like on this video again check me out on my second youtube channel i would really appreciate that we are having currently 250 subscribers that would be nice if we can hit 1000 subscribers by the end of this month and with your help, I'm sure we can. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.